Um, I just want to give a warm welcome to Summer, and it's it's just so lovely to have you here. And also, of course, a warm welcome to everybody to today's session. And a special thank you to Kevin for taking over the screen sharing just because mine wasn't working today. So to get started, we're going to be talking about the best websites for academic research. So we're going to go over a brief overview of what we're going to be covering today and speaking about. Firstly, we're going to go over the components of a good academic research website, so really what to look for. Then we're going to go over some examples of good sites, then move on to tips for finding trustworthy academic websites. And then to contrast that, we're going to go over websites that are not good for credible research. And then with that, some examples of bad sites. So really giving the positives and negatives associated with the topic. To begin with a few factors or characteristics that make a good research website. Research, research websites that are effective and reliable come from a professional company or a creator. They offer a wide variety of accurate and academic related information. And typically it's safest to go with a website that is widely reputable and well-known. So you've heard of the publisher, maybe it's a reliable source that a lot of people use for specific information. Moreover, a research website should have easy navigation. So it's easy for you to actually use it and it should be organized so that the information is easily accessible. If there's a site that has a significant amount of advertising on it, it's most likely not credible for research as it may be more for economic gain. So it could possibly just be distracting, misleading and ineffective. So it's really good to look out for those kinds of things. If it doesn't seem professional, it most likely isn't. So some examples of good sources you can use if you're looking into academic types of work. Google Scholar, amazing, it's incredible. I personally use Google Scholar and they have great search results. And Kevin's also gonna give you a little bit of a live demonstration of the site as well to give you more information about it. There's also JSTOR, RefSeq, and online academic libraries as well. So there may be physical libraries that you can access in person, but there are also some that have been digitized and you can actually access resources online as well. So now we're gonna delve a little bit deeper into Google Scholar. You can access the site by going to scholar.google.com or you can click on the hyperlink once you receive a copy of this presentation in a few days. And Google Scholar in particular is a version of Google that is limited to only educational sources. So it makes it easier to find secure information that's also accurate. So it's not gonna give you all of these kinds of broad search results that normal Google gives you, where you don't really know what you're getting yourself into. It could maybe be a blog and then it's not really reputable. Google Scholar is really gonna give you the top academic scholarly results. And you should still double check the validity of a website that you're going to, but Google Scholar is known to make it easier to access information on what you're looking for specifically, and it's much more likely to be a reliable source. Now for JSTOR, this is a digital library and it has more than 12 million journal articles, books, images, and primary sources, which can be really helpful if you're doing research and you really want to figure out more about the topic and the issue. And also in history, if you're studying kind of a historical event, primary sources can be very helpful in supporting any arguments you want to make. And this platform is available for free through many schools and libraries. And to access all of the content they offer, you will have to sign in with an affiliated organization. So it isn't as accessible as Google Scholar is, but it may be available to you with your library. And we've also included an image on the screen of what the website looks like. Next is RefSeq. RefSeq is a website that is student friendly which is great because it helps with all different kinds of academic needs and it's not just research-based. 
So this will give you more broad search results and it has less specificity than, for example, Google Scholar, but it's easily accessible to anyone, making it a great place to go to if you're doing some general academic research. Now, there are also some online academic libraries, as I mentioned. And these libraries can be very useful for students and have an endless amount of information for almost any topic that you may be researching. And of course, they're also very convenient because you don't actually have to go to a physical library, search through all of the shelves or get direction from a librarian. It's really easy to navigate it yourself, so it's much more efficient. And most of the time, they're also free and can be very useful for small academic inquiries. So you might not be doing a full-on academic project, but if you just want to learn about a specific topic, it's easy to find that information. Now we're going to go over a few ways and steps that you can take to find a trustworthy academic research website. As mentioned, it's always a great idea to go for websites that are reputable, have a good reputation, and are well known so there's no risk involved. Additionally, this will ensure that you will find the academic information that you need and information that's very reliable and is actually correct. Now, in order to do so, it's important to remember that websites are created by the government or if they're created by educational institutions, they have a better chance of being accurate for any specific details or information that you're looking for. Something in particular that you want to keep your eye out for are sites that end with .gov, .com, .edu, and .org. And it also, some sites do charge for access to their resources, but it is safer to stick with free websites so there's no scam-related issues or anything of that nature, just because you don't want to be putting in your credit card information or any personal information to sites that are um, not reliable. They may be scams, um, but also just know that there are sometimes sites that you have to subscribe to, and they are very much reliable. Now, there are also, on the other hand, sites that are not good for academic research, including Wikipedia, blog websites, about.com, and also social media sites, as they really are based upon individual opinions and knowledge that come from just what people think, rather than actual scientific studies and experiments. So for Wikipedia, it's known to be unreliable because anybody on the internet is actually able to edit the information on any one of the pages that they have posted. Meaning for research purposes, it could offer just completely inaccurate information that could end up being very unhelpful and it may lead you in the incorrect direction in terms of what you're looking into. Next, blog websites, whether they're about personal opinions or not, they do tend to have a lot of biased information, which are not effective for educational purposes, and they are also usually inaccurate. So if you want to use their information, there are typically errors involved in whatever is published. And it's also important to note that blog websites are very helpful in other ways. If you want to learn about maybe a chef or somebody's personal life, it's great to use blog posts. But for academic research, it's a great idea to stay clear of any sorts of blogs. Now, about.com is another website that is highly unreliable. And this is because it's an opinion-based site. So there's absolutely no guarantee that any information you take from the site is correct. And a lot of the time it's actually uploaded by people who aren't export experts in the field or haven't done any research and are just completely unfamiliar with the topic. And there's also social media sites as well. And of course, we know that social media is based upon the inputs from users all over the world, and it can be very inaccurate in any instance to be using these sites for academic research. Additionally, social media is infamous for spreading false information and could have dangerous consequences if not fact-checked. 
checked. For example, during the COVID-19 pandemic, a ton of misinformation was being spread, which was highly harmful and dangerous for societies and the health of people. So it's important to remember to not rely on anything that's being said on social media for your academic research. Now I'm gonna hand it off to Kevin to lead you through a demonstration of Google Scholar. Okay, I will be leading the demo. Um, so what we do here is that we go to scholar.google.com. We just copy paste this real quick. Uh, okay, so this j looks just like any other um, Google search. And then we can search for um, some scientific term like microbiome, for instance. And everything here appears just like a normal Google search. But here it offers a lot of studies by authors and it contains the author's name and it gives credit to the author, which is a really a good type of academic study method so that we could give credit to the author and we don't uh, involve in plagiarism. And then uh, we can save some items to our, um, our profile. Uh, I think, and go to save it into our library, I believe. Uh, it should have. Well, here's my profile in my library. So if you um, sign in, I believe that you're able to add some articles into your library and uh, you're able to access it in the future through a much easier way. And then uh, you could also um, change and uh, find so sort some of the articles that you want to find and find some rated articles, like for instance, the closer the time is better because uh, it's more um, related to the current days. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, you can customize a lot of changes. You can sort by day, sort by relevant, relevance. And yeah, so it's it's a really useful academic tool. Uh, well, you can also set up a uh email notifications by clicking on the create alert uh and once there are new articles posted you will be receiving emails about it so that you'll be up to date about all of this uh relevant articles so in general this google scholar is just really useful and it provides a lot of academic information that's not biased and really beneficial yeah that's just Google Scholar.